Father God, Father God, I come before you this morning and we ask to be directed by your Holy Spirit. We come submitted to the Lord of hosts. We come submitted to the Lord of hosts. When Joshua asked him, are you on our side or on theirs? And he said, no, neither. So Father, we come submitted to the Lord of hosts. We come submitted to the Lord of hosts for what is your desire for this nation. And Father, I ask for the Holy Spirit to fall on each of us and that you give us wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and the fear of the Lord. I thank you for that, Father. I praise you and I bless you for anointing each person here. I release the seers to see, the hearers to hear, the knowers to know. In Jesus' name. Um, for those who are on phones, I have the rules for the meeting. So it's important. That <laughs> Teresa, <laughs> on the road. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, no, don't, don't. We just, we just pray that there's no problem. Um, we're gonna. St I, I'm. You have to stay with the focus of the meeting. If you get off focus, if you get off target, if you go in a direction that isn't appropriate, because even if it's just off focus, I will mute you. Okay. Please do not be offended. We have to be, we have to learn how to be laser focused in our prayers. This is critical. Um, I can remember at the late nineties, um, I was at Morningstar where my husband was going to school there and the Lord spoke to me and he said, the church does not have, is not equipped for the warfare that is coming. And they're, sh they're shooting off, they're firing like cannons into the sky, you know, at their enemy and they need to have laser missiles. And so if we wanna be effective, we have to be laser missiles. So it has to be very targeted prayers. So targeted for exactly what we're going to be working with. Um, so then I want you, when you're not praying or you're not, you know, when you're seeing, when you're doing whatever you're doing, pray in the spirit, pray in tongues, support everything with tongues, okay? Um, alert me in chat if you have something to pray. If you get a vision, write it in chat. If you get a scripture, write it in chat, okay? We use chat a lot for directing what's happening in the prayer, okay? Um, someone else has come on with a phone. We don't know who that is at the moment. Um, so I said, if, uh, this is all in chat. If, you sent you, if I sense you're praying amiss, I will mute your microphone. No offense, but if you're off target or make anything personal rather than focusing on the true enemy, um, I'll, I'll mute you. We stand with the Lord of hosts. And when Joshua asked him, are you with us or them? He said, no, neither. Basically, we are standing with the Lord. And that's critically, critically important during this chaotic season, okay? Does everybody understand the rules in an agreement? Okay. <laughs> Can I just ask you, Jackie, if we're praying in tongues, do we mute ourselves? Yeah, mute yourself if you're praying. And everyone will be muted unless you raise your hand saying, okay. or you do something in chat. Okay. Now, the ones who are on phones who can't raise their hand and probably can't chat, you're just going to have to unmute and then kind of when there's a pause, interrupt. Okay. I give you permission to do that. Welcome, Marissa from Mexico. So we've got Yudoko is from England. Marissa is from Mexico. Um, Carolyn is from Texas. Ramona, where are you? Sorry, I hit the wrong button. I'm from Miss, I'm in Mississippi. Okay, we got Mississippi represented. Joyla, where are you from? I'm from California. California is represented. Excellent. Teresa, where are you? Maryland. Maryland. Excellent. Okay, KB, where are you from? It just comes up, KB. I don't have any names. I'm uh, from Michigan. Michigan, okay. And 1515-494-3887, where are you from? Unmute. I'd like to know who's among us. I really do. Okay, I'm gonna unmute you. See, okay, can you speak? We're in 1515. Okay. So where are you from? I'm Joni, I'm from Iowa. Oh, Iowa, good. Okay, 167. Hi. Where are you from? 
Oh, she disappeared for a second. I know we're going to be taking time this morning for this. I just want to know who the people are. I think it's really important. Um, when you come on as a regular, you know, then it will be easier. But I'm real careful about who, who comes on. We've had one set situation when I was doing Mercy Court. And when we would replay the videos, the one person looked like a demon. It was incredible. And I had to block them permanently. It was like, oh, my God. And people, they sent me the screenshots. It was awful. It was awful. Okay, anyone else? Okay, 151, I'll mute you again. That other one didn't come on. Okay. Um, I'm going to start teaching. Um, put it on speaker view. Now, one of the things we must recognize and where we're going to be putting a lot of focus this week, I don't know for how many weeks we'll be putting the focus, it will be on the church and the body of Christ and the failure of the body of Christ to be salt in this land. And when the salt has lost its savor, it is trampled under feet, underfoot. Okay. Now, the body of Christ has lost its savor because it's become conformed to this world. It's truly conformed to this world. On this past Sunday, um, Alan Smith, who's the prophet at my church, the church I go to is called New Life Taylorsville, North Carolina. And they have excellent, excellent teachings. If you're not getting excellent teachings, you can follow this church online where they post all of their, everything that happens. And Alan's starting, he's been teaching on the prophets now probably for a year. And he started Daniel. And on Sunday, it was Daniel 2. And he started talking about Nebuchadnezzar's vision. You know, the statue with the head of gold and the chest of bronze, and it goes down. Well, the bottom, and I found this real, the, the feet are made of iron, which is part of the Roman Empire, and clay. I looked up in the Hebrew what that clay was, and it's ancient pot shards, which would be, when you do an excavation in archaeology, these are the broken pieces of pottery. So when I was thinking about that this morning, what is in this age, what is forming this age, is the iron rule of Rome, okay? And we know Rome polluted the church back in Const Constantin Constantine and removed it from its Jewish roots and established even cathedrals are in the order of a Roman temple. And then um, they, the pots herds, when I looked at that, it's ancient. These are ancient broken pieces. And I believe this is the ancient God's idolatry going back to the very beginning. So this age is a mixture, okay? It's a mixture. And so that mixture has come into the church. And so we're going to really be looking at that, the mixture in the church. I started thinking, I've been thinking a lot about, you know, how do we stand with the Lord of hosts? Will we have to stand totally aligned with the Bible, with his ordinances, with his laws, with his commandments? We have to stand totally aligned in every area of our life. Personally, everything we do, we must stand is light and salt. Salt in the earth that has savior. Salt is a preservative. When Righteousness preserves a nation. The loss of righteousness causes the nation to be destroyed, be open to destruction. Now, because the church has lost its righteousness, and there's, we know in churches, and I'm, this is not personal, I'm not pointing to any fingers at anyone, but in this, it's very, very important that we recognize the church has lost the standards of righteousness. Righteousness is being in right standing with God. It's not a matter of pleasing men. It's not a matter of being conformed to the culture. So we were told, B 
be, con be not conformed to this world, but be, conf but be conformed to Jesus Christ. Be a living sacrifice for him. And it's so much easier to be silent. It's so much easier to be caught in whatever. Now, I believe this whole COVID struggle we're in right now and the whole shutdown, um, Kim Clement always said, look for the dynamic in the de de demonic. And I believe there is a dynamic that's up here for the body of Christ. Because we know mega churches can't survive without meeting because they have such big, um, incredible, incredible budgets. Um, I don't know if you heard the story of Jeremiah Johnson. He was invited to a big mega church out in, I think it was California. Don't quote me. And the pastor said, I want you to sit there and discern the, um, these meetings. And when the five meetings were over, because this was a mega church, so it was like five services, he, he came up to Jeremiah and said, well, what do you think? And he said, well, the music was outstanding. The preaching was perfect in terms of its presentation. There was one problem. The Spirit of God wasn't there. Are your musicians even saved? Turned out they were paying $100 to $300 an hour to these unsaved musicians to lead worship. That is just an abomination because you're bringing in the profane into the house of God. You're bringing in foreigners. And whatever is released from the pulpit of a, of a church is released to everyone in the congregation. So if worldliness is in the worship team, but they're just great singers and great musicians, but they're not standing in righteousness, they're releasing whatever their hidden sin is on the entire congregation. And so it goes with pastors too. So there is a decision each of one of us have to make. And the decision is to stand in utter righteousness with the Lord. And I know this is a journey. I know this is a, it's not a destination. It's an ongoing process. I've been in this process for many years. From the time I learned iniquity in 1988, that is 12, 32 years I've been working on iniquity, looking at my own life. Now, on some Saturday night, the Lord told me to be baptized, to cleanse my intercession. Our church has aligned itself with the North Georgia Bapt Revival, which is a baptism of fire revival. And as a result, we built a baptismal. And just recently, they opened the baptismal. And I was, the Lord told me, he said, you, I want you baptized. So I took whatever I needed on Sunday morning to be baptized. But I really didn't understand what it meant to cleanse my intercession. You know, you do intercession to the very, very best of your ability. And when I was in the church service, Pastor Steve began talking about what our core beliefs are. And the very first core belief we had is that Jesus came, Jesus Christ, John 3, 16, Jesus Christ came to save the entire world, all men, everyone. There is no we and them, okay? There is no we and them. They're only those who are not yet in the kingdom. But the blood of Jesus was spilt for all of them. The covenant is available for all of them. So no matter how awful people are, no matter how, um, how angry they make us, we have to, we really have to get rid of the we and them mentality. So I stayed there and I was waiting to be baptized and I was meditating on, I had wept as he was speaking. It was an extremely tender service for me. So then I, um, I realized that the we and them mentality goes back to Cain and Abel. This is in our DNA. This is who we are. In all of our generations, it's always about we and them, no matter who the them is, politically, racially, um, oh, there's so many, class-wise. My mother was very, very 
um, anti, she hated the British, high British accent, and she would literally tell us to turn the radio off or the TV off if she heard a high British accent. I had no idea. We only found out several, a couple years ago that she, her family was from Cornwall and they were tin miners. They were severely oppressed by the English lords of on that portion of England. And she definitely had a reaction to that. That was a we and them for her. So we've got these in us and the Lord saying, uh-uh, we're in Christ. We're part of one body and we have the same vision and heart that he has, which is for all men to be saved, all men. Then pastor gave us a scripture. Now this one, he did it out of another version. Um, remind people to be submissive to their magistrates and authorities, to be obedient, to be prepared and willing to do any upright and honorable work. This is Titus 1, 1, Titus 3, 1. To slander, abuse, speak evil of no one. And the version he did is be disrespectful of no one. To avoid being contentious, to be forbearing, yielding, gentle, and to show unqualified curt courtesy towards everyone. For we were once thoughtless and senseless and obstinate and disobedient and deluded and mis misled. We too were once slaves to all sorts of cravings and pleasures, wasting our days in malice and jealousy, envy, hateful and hating one another. But it was the goodness of the Lord Jesus and the kindness of God our Savior to man appeared and he saved us. And that's what we have to remember in all of this. Okay? So there's no us and them because we are all one in the body of Christ. And the ones who aren't in the body yet are ones who have potential to be in the body which is really, really important. So we're gonna start praying today specifically about the failure of the church. Even in the church, there is a we in them. The spirit-filled versus the non-spirit-filled. The liberal versus the conservatives, the evangelicals. The very strict Pentecostals that have all the rules and those who have all the freedoms. And they've given their freedoms for license. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we have we and thems in the body. Now, if we have we and thems in the body, why are we surprised that we don't see it in the nation? The nation reflects the body of Christ. The failure of the, the body of Christ to be salt and light to the, this nation. The failure of the body of Christ to stand in righteousness. Okay. Um, does anyone want to say something? I'm going to mute you and allow you, um, I'm going to stop the recording.